So let's have a look uh, back at our round jet and how we can make that um, self similar. So what we need is a characteristic length scale and a characteristic um, yeah, velocity in, in this case. So the characteristic length scale, we can use now the um, half width of the jet that we defined before. And uh, the characteristic velocity, we can use now the center line velocity. So if you measure now the velocity profiles over here, first uh, I want to show you now some actual data. And this data is actually coming here from this book here. Uh, from Stephen Pope, Turbulent Flows, and uh, this one actually shows um, some nice data over here. So we have here first uh, the raw data, more or less. So you have normalized it with the jet velocity, so the exit velocity of the jet, and the diameter at the jet. So these are not uh, very useful uh, quantities to normalize with in terms of uh, self-similarity, because they're not dependent on x. But they're quite useful just to get a good uh, first idea of, of, of the flow field. So you have here, you see at x over d equal 30, the first flow field, uh, the first uh, measurement. And you see you have here a centerline velocity that's a little bit higher than 20% you know, of the jet velocity at this point. And then the velocity goes down the further out you go to the, to the radius. Then one for x over d equals 60, and another one at for x over d equals 100. So x over d 100, you see it's uh, quite far away from the jet already, and you can still see uh, the, the effect of the jet. So what uh, can be done now is that you find out what is the half width of the jet. So you see here, this one is, let's say, yeah, 0 0.215. Yeah, so half of that would be 0. Uh, 1075, so that would be somewhere over here. And you see where this one is going to meet, these two. And then you see that this one is now for the half width of the jet um, for x over d equal 30. So and then you do the same for, for x over d equal 60 and x over d 100. You sort of look at the center line velocity, you use half of it and then look what is uh, the radial distance for that. Okay, so if you're now using that, you're saying now that um, your characteristic length scale, so xi is going to be then your radius over the radius of the half width, and your velocity, which is a function of uh, x and y, sorry, uh, x and r. Um, is going to be then the velocity over, sorry. Sorry, the, the characteristic u tilde is going to be then the um, u at the velocity at the point over the center line velocity, u naught. So the velocity at the, at the center. Okay, so you're doing these two. You are doing that for all of the velocity profiles, and ta-da, you're going to get the following plot. So these are actual measurements from Vigansk and Fiedler from 1996, uh, 1969, sorry. And uh, so they are quite old already, but uh, still, yeah, still one of the uh, most cited papers in terms of jets. So you see that all of these measurements for different um, distances here, x over d equal 40, 50, 60, 75, and almost 100, they're all suddenly plop falling onto one profile. Okay, so very neat. That is now for the velocity profile, so then you can see that all of these are actually self-similar, they're all falling onto the same graph. That means uh, the jet flow is self-similar. So you're doing that now for the mean velocity profile, that means you can have uh, some information about that. But um, most importantly, we can do that also for other quantities in the flow. And you're going to get uh, similar graphs. So if you're doing that now for the Reynolds stress tensor, so for the Reynolds stress tensor, you would like to have now the fluctuating part for the U component, V, and W component. So these are, uh, from again, from the book from Stephen Pope, he uses now this notation for each of these quantities in the Reynolds stress tensor for u prime square, w prime square, v prime square, and u prime, v prime. Um, and you see that uh, all of them 
uh, this one is already the, the, the curve fit. All of them more or less fit onto the same graph as well. So all of the total quantities are falling onto the same graph, and that helps you now defining um, turbulence model that can, uh, so essentially, instead of uh, trying to define now the turbulence model on a three-dimensional um, plane, it's, uh, you're reducing that to, to a one-dimensional problem over here. All right, so far so good. Unfortunately, not all of the turbulence models are going to be um, useful to predict this kind of behavior, but more to that in a moment.